Guys, if you want to support these projects in the future, please head over to mullingbrothers.com where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirts and much more. And also hit the join button down below for exclusive membership benefits. Uh, but before that, let's jump into the highlight. What were the obstacles you know, to, to reach the goal? Oh, God, every day was an obstacle. Uh, it take, for a double above knee amputee, it takes anywhere between 300 and 500% more energy for me to do anything than it does for an able-bodied person. And so I thought, you know, being a Royal Marine, I'm pretty fit, it's not gonna be an issue. It was an issue. You know, I, I, the first day I walked one length of the parallel bars, which is about six meters, it wiped me out. I was exhausted. And I had to go back to my room and, and sleep and have an afternoon nap, because it just wiped me completely out. And, you know, every day you're getting a little bit stronger, a little bit fitter, you're getting a little bit more used to the legs, but it's just, unbelievably difficult in the beginning you know and then when you add to that that I only had one arm and it was my weak arm and I'm trying to do everything and relearn and you know every, every everything was an obstacle in, in those early days um, absolutely everything and what, would, what did you go back to to keep you motivated was it the idea of that goal of walking onto the parade absolutely I, I, I had such a, a vivid picture in my mind of what that would look like with you know desert uniform on, green beret on, everyone formed up on the parade ground, thousands of people's friends and family around, and me just standing at the sidelines. And like I said, it wouldn't be pretty, but I would do what I could to get onto that parade ground and stand next to them for when that medal got presented to me. And that was, it was such a, a vivid image that it just motivated the heck out of me just to go off and do whatever it took no matter how sore I was tired I was how many times I hit the deck and you know cut myself bruise myself I would just go back at the end of the day remember why I was doing it remember what the goal was and then just shake it off and start again the next day did, did you get that moment which was that the walking walking out to the parade yourself absolutely yeah yeah we did what did that feel like what was the day like even that and I hope I didn't show it too much, but even that was horrendous. I was in unbelievable amounts of pain because I still haven't healed properly. I had a, like a walking stick, but like I said, it's 300 to 500% more energy. Even for me to stand on the spot, it's like you marching, you know, like jogging on the spot with your knees up high. And I was there for 45 minutes and I was just terrified. I was terrified that I was going to fall over and embarrass myself and hurt myself. But I just, you know, I had a constant conversation in my head about why I was there, why I was doing it, and, and what it was going to be like if I was successful. So turning the vision, like you said, you planted that vision in your head like a manifestation, mm -hmm. and, and achieving it and, and getting it. Um, I, I know people can apply it to their own life all the time, mm -hmm. and people do, but was that one of the first, the first things, I mean obviously getting into the military, you probably did use a similar sort of technique, but when that came around it happened, did it just solidify that you can continually use this for the future? Absolutely. And, and it also, you know, I started reflecting after that day and I realised that I'd done it before. So when I competed in martial arts, I always used to visualise myself getting my hand raised. When I was going through Royal Marines training, I always visualised what it would feel like to be presented with that green beret. And then when I, you know, achieved that goal at the Meadows Parade, I came home here on a Friday evening and I just thought, this is what I need to do in my life for everything. Not just, you know, set one goal to walk at the Meadows Parade. Fitness, finance, family, every, every area that's important in my life, I need to set goals in these areas and drive forward towards achieving them. Because I think it's very dangerous, not just in my situation, but in anyone's situation, if you stay static for too long and the negative thoughts start coming in. You've always got to have something positive to, to move towards and strive towards, to occupy your headspace. You know, 80, 90, 95% of it has got to be positive and driving forward towards something that you want to achieve. A lot, a lot of this is self-motivation, like it's goals you're setting, and it's a lot, it seems like a lot of internal. Was there anyone externally motivating you? Was there anyone inspiring you at the time? I had a lot of people. And the beauty is, like, just go on the internet. You know, you can find inspiration everywhere. And I was always researching people. There was a guy in America I actually flew out to America in 2009 to be mentored by another triple amputee because I was the UK's first. And I knew if I needed to level up, I needed to learn from this guy. And he was running, swimming, surfing, driving. He was a motivational speaker. 
And I was being told, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, that's not possible, no one's ever done that before. And I'm watching this guy, Cameron, on the internet doing all these things that people tell me a triple amputee shouldn't be able to do. And his injuries were exactly the same as mine. In fact, his arm was even higher than mine. And I'm just watching this guy doing it all. And I constantly consumed his content as, as motivation, you know, because I, again, I saw it was physically possible. And I knew that if he could do it, I could do it. And I eventually ended up in, on the 9th of June, 2009, I flew out to meet him. I went through a three week boot camp with him and his team. They made me leave my wheelchair in the UK. They made me fly on my own. Couldn't take anyone with me, which I don't mind admitting was terrifying at the time. But they, they hammered me for three weeks solid and I never used my wheelchair since. 9th of June, 2009, you can search my house. There's not a wheelchair here or anywhere near here. I got rid of it, gave it to the hospital and just became a full time prosthetic user. Um, for me, seeing somebody else do something is like a bit, it's a big thing. Like, like you say, like you see someone else do it, you can do it mm -hmm. at that point. How important is it for us to, be, to lead, lead our lives in that way? You know, like somebody who's going through something who's struggling now to, to find themselves on the other side of it. And we talk about like reaching back over and helping somebody else mm -hmm. and, and being that example for somebody else. Yeah, and do you know what? The, the reason, there's, there's a couple of reasons why I live my life the way I do. The first one is to let the guys on the ground that saved me know, the medics and the helicopter that saved me know, the doctors, nurse, everyone that's been involved in my journey, to let them know that everything they did was perfect and correct. And you know, I'm out living my life the fullest I can because of what they did for me, but also because I want to show other people. You know, it's, it's a pretty severe situation to be in when, when you lose three limbs. And if I can live my life the way I want to live it and enjoy it and, and embrace everything that this brings with it, I'm hoping that can inspire other people to do the same thing. No, definitely. It definitely, I mean, it definitely does, 100%. Mm. Um, how, how did you, on the flip side of it, how did you deal with people telling you that you couldn't do something? Like specifically saying, like, you can't, well, negative, negative sort of comments about it. Mm. You're not gonna walk again or, you know, you shouldn't be trying this. How did you deal with that at the time? Well, how do you deal with it now as well? Now is very different. Back then, because I didn't know a lot about this new situation, it, it just used to frustrate me. And I would say, okay, let's try. And people weren't very receptive to that. And, and I understand it because people were worried I'd hurt myself or, or do something silly, you know, and they were trying to protect me. But when I was seeing someone else in a similar situation doing it all the time and saying, this guy's doing it, let's do it. People just didn't want to embrace it, which is why I ended up going over to meet him anyway. And my mindset changed and I was introduced to a whole new world of, you know, being an amputee, using prosthetics, the tools that you can use as an amputee to achieve what you want to achieve. So if I want to go hiking, I wouldn't wear these legs, I'd wear my little ones. If I want to go swimming, I can wear prosthetics, I can do it without them. You know, my mind was open to what I can achieve. So now when people say, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, I won't go at it with a with attitude of, you know, just watch me, you know, Mr. Angry. I just be like, okay, we'll, we'll try. And we'll give it our best shot. We'll see what resources we've got, you know, and we'll do as much as we can. And 99% of the time, if, if it's something that I'm passionate about, I really want to achieve, we'll figure it out. I love it. So how, how could somebody apply that to themselves? I think you just have to have confidence in yourself. And you need to be, I think, smart with it. Like I said, it's not about attacking it head on full of anger and you know, trying to prove everyone wrong. You just gotta be tactical with whatever it is that you wanna achieve. And there's inspiration everywhere. I don't know, you know, if you wanted to be, I don't know, like a property millionaire, right? Just go and find someone who's already been a property millionaire. Find out what they did physically, mentally, you know, and kind of replicate it as closely as you can. That's what I did with Cameron in America. I found a guy who achieved what I wanted to achieve and I went out and met him and I mirrored what he did as closely as I possibly could to achieve the results that he had as closely as I possibly could. You know, it's not that complicated, you know, but you've got to want it enough. It's got to be, you've got to be passionate about it and it's got to be something that gives you goosebumps when you think about it. It's not like, okay, I want to be a property millionaire. Why? It'd be nice, wouldn't it? No, because 
it's going to give me financial freedom and I can do so much with that money and help so many people or whatever your motivation is. It's got to give you goosebumps and get you excited. You know what I mean? If you want to support projects like this in the future, guys, we cannot do this without you. We cannot get our film crew and myself to fly around the world without your support. So please head over to mulliganbrothers.com where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirts and much, much more. And also, please consider becoming a YouTube member with the join button. All your support literally makes this possible, so thank you. Um, if you want to see behind the scenes as well, head over to Instagram, follow me at Jordan Mulligan Brother, where you can see what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis. Have a blessed and productive day, and we just want to say, the whole team wants to say, thank you. Sincerely thank you for all your support, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.